And in another explicit ayah, Allah said, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Do they not travel in the lands? فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا So they may develop hearts that they can understand with. أَوْ آذَانُ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Or ears that they may hear with. Listen. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارِ Indeed, it doesn't blind the eyes. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ But it blinds the hearts that are in the chests. Leaving no room for doubt what is being referred to here. It blinds the hearts that is in the chests. Hajib, the Quran. Huge emphasis on this. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah has beautified Islam in your hearts. And then the hadith. What did the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? At-taqwa ha-huna. At-taqwa ha-huna. He said piety is here. Piety is here. Pointing to his heart three times. What do you and I do when we want to say that we've got things going on in our mind? We say, right? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, it's the heart. And the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, he mentions other ahadith that indicate that the center of reasoning is indeed the heart. أَعْدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ In the hadith Qudsi, Allah said that I have prepared for my righteous servants in Jannah, paradise, that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no heart could ever imagine. So what is the center of imagination according to the sunnah? The heart. So it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And like I said, the fact that conventional medicine is yet to arrive at much of what we are explaining shouldn't stump us or cause us to doubt. In fact, there are so many questions that modern day medics, with all due respect, brothers, <laughs> that they cannot answer till this day. And understandably so. What is the reality of an irada, an intention? What is the reality of love and hatred? What is that? How is that formed in the human being? Where does it sit? No one knows. What is despair? What is submission and acceptance? What is reliance? What is fear? What is jealousy? What is contentment? What is happiness? Can a medic explain to you what these things are? Of course not. So the easiest person to stump, <laughs> dear brothers, is the medic. Not because of their ignorance. No, actually, it's the opposite. It's because of how little we actually know of the human body. We're still learning, but I share with you this. Modern day research is really catching up with the Quran and Sunnah as it always does. And it's beginning to suggest in recent years that there is a huge emphasis on the human heart as having brain-like qualities. Uh, having what? Brain-like qualities. There was a study in 1974 by two French researchers, two French scientists, uh, Gahre and Vernigi, I think their names were. And they were essentially stimulating the vagus nerve in cats. The vagus nerve is the nerve that connects the heart to the brains and they communicate. And they discovered that it wasn't as simple as the brain communicating messages to the heart. It was actually a two-way communication. The brain is sending messages to the heart, but the heart has its fair share of things to say to the brain as well. And this shocked them. And they, and they found that sometimes the brain would give instruction to the heart and the heart wouldn't obey. So it's making them believe that the heart is acting to some extent as an independent brain with its own decision making. They've discovered that the, 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 the heart in recent times, they've actually reclassified the heart as an endocrine gland. You guys know this better than me. When they saw it producing a new hormone, they call it the ANF. And this hormone actively affects your kidneys, your blood vessels and parts of the brain. The heart is producing hormones uh, that affect the brain and influence the brain. There is two-way communication and the heart is able to learn apparently. It's able to understand. It's able to communicate these messages to other cells. It's amazing, subhanAllah. It's phenomenal. So the heart brain, this is what they are calling it, the heart brain. And to show you this type of independence to some extent that it has, look at in recent times when the heart is taken out of a the chest of a, a person, and it's still beating. 
when it's completely severed, all of those nerves between it and the brains, so the central nervous system is severed, yet the heart can continue beating by itself for some time. Am I, am I mistaken, doctor? Right? What does that tell you? It tells you that it's not entirely dependent upon the brain. In fact, it's self-initiated. In fact, we know in modern day uh, medicine that what? That the heart begins to beat within the chest of a fetus well before the brain is even formed. So the instruction to beat was not initiated by the brain. The central nervous system is not existent. It is self-initiated. How come? The heart has a level of independent reasoning. It has to be taken care of, dear brothers and sisters. This is serious stuff. And uh, there was actually, there's documented cases of people who were beheaded. So the connection between the brain and the heart is gone. And the body, the beheaded body actually stood up and it walked around for a while and then it fell back down. How, would, how did that happen? How, how could that happen? I read in an article in 2008 in the Mail Online of an amazing case of, a, uh, of an American who took the heart from a donor and then a few years down he became very depressed and he committed suicide. They discovered that 12 years prior, the one who gave him the heart, right, the donor, had also committed suicide from depression. Same heart. Here's what is more amazing. When they investigated it, they found that the person who received the heart of the depressed one, who did he marry? He married the former wife of the donor. She was the one. <laughs> SubhanAllah. It's insane. In the same article, a lady, she mentions about her experience in receiving a heart from a young boy who was 18 years old young man, 18 years old, who died in a motorcycle accident. So she needed a new heart, actually she needed a new set of lungs, she took both from him. And then she speaks about her waking up from the uh, operation. The press were there to interview her. They said to her, how do you feel? She said, I'll be honest with you, I'm dying for a beer right now. I could really do with a beer. She said, then I stopped in my tracks, I said, where'd that come from? I don't even like beer. She said, I just needed the taste of beer for some strange reason. I was disappointed with myself. She said, then I started getting these cravings for three things. Snickers, green peppers, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't like these things, she said. And then she said, I became a lot more masculine in my behavior. I felt it. My femininity was dying out. I was walking like a man. I was lumbering like this stocky football player as if I've got muscles with my chest puffed out. I didn't know what was happening. I was becoming more self-conscious, more reliant upon myself, more, conf more daring, like the guy almost who died from a motorcycle accident. And then, this is the weirdest thing. She said, I started having these re weird romantic dreams that I was in infatuated with a Tim L. A Tim, she said his surname began with L. I, I, I don't remember what the, the surname was. She said, I loved him so much in my dream, it was like I was inhaling him into my soul. It's like he was part of me. Anyway, she said, I, I began to, there was something fishy about this. I, I wasn't myself. So I decided to inquire about the person who donated the heart to me. The hospital wouldn't give, in, give me the name because of their strict code of confidentiality. She said, I never gave up. So she went with a friend to an obituary. They found the name of the person, the donor. What was his name? Timothy Lamarand. Timothy, that's the Tim. Lamarand, that's the L. She knew his name just by virtue of the heart. Tim L. She was in love with him because he's now inside of her. She said, I managed to track down uh, his address. Me and my friend, we went and we spoke to the family and they were very emotional to see part of their son inside somebody else. We spoke. And I said, what was his favorite drinks? They said, he loved beer. What about his foods? They said, well, he loved chicken nuggets. That's the KFC. They said he was really into his chocolate, especially Snickers. And uh, whenever he'd have salad, he'd have to have a lot of the green peppers inside as well. SubhanAllah. So what is this heart, brothers and sisters? What is this heart? Just a mushy, 
limb that just cries over love? Or is there a little bit more to that? Yeah? There was a book by uh, Claire Sylvia called Change of Heart, actually, like the name of our series. And she speaks of a uh, woman who receives the heart of a donor and within a few weeks she knew the name of the donor, her address, and a lot of the information about the family. Although all of this information was withheld from her. And she speaks of another woman who took the heart of a woman that was murdered. And threw out her dreams and moments of quiet solitude, she was able to rethink the entire crime scene for how the lady was killed. She managed to reconstruct the entire details until she gave the details to the police officer and they found him and convicted him. So, the center of reasoning and the center of consciousness is the human heart according to the religion.